Why is regulating AI premature and possibly ill-advised? I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet, and joining me is Andrew Burt. He is the Chief Privacy Officer and Legal Engineer at Immuta. Welcome, Andrew. Thanks so much, Tanya. It's great to be here. So what does Immuta do? So Immuta is a data management platform for data science. And what that means is we make it incredibly easy to connect any underlying data storage technology to any tool a data science uh, organization might want to use. We make it really easy to control that data as it's connected in one single place. And then we make it very easy to comply with basically any regulation you could ever think of on data. And what is a legal engineer exactly? So uh, legal engineer is of course part of my uh, funky title. And what legal engineering means, we have a team of legal engineers here at Amuta, and it means thinking about the law, and thinking about legal requirements on data from an engineering perspective. And so a lot of what we do is deconstruct global regulations on data. GDPR is, of course, the, you know, the, 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 the regulation of the hour. And we deconstruct it into its logical kind of form and then figure out how to have that um, uh, implementable as dynamic policies within our software platform. Um, and we also think about what types of features uh, these laws should translate to. So it's really kind of a new take. Our, our um, uh, one of our theses is that law and data science are really kind of uh, coming into conflict. Data on the one hand is becoming more important to organizations around the globe. And on the other hand, governments are starting to react and enact new and more stringent requirements on that data. Um, and so what a legal engineer does, what we do at Amuta is figure out how to kind of um, uh, frictionlessly uh, merge these two trends to make more and more important data easier to use and to make stricter regulations easier to comply with. You're speaking at South by Southwest on the topic of regulating AI. Can you give us a preview of what that would, what your talk is about? Yeah, so um, I'm really excited this year to, to be talking at South by again. Um, and what I'll be talking about is there's all of this talk and all of this pressure to regulate artificial intelligence. I think we see Elon Musk um, as kind of like the tip of the spear there going around saying, you know, over the summer, the National Governors Association, governments need to regulate AI. Um, and so there are a couple of points I'm going to be making. The first is that any kind of broad sweeping uh, regulations directed at AI, I think are going to fail or they're not going to be as effective as they need to be. And instead, what I'm going to be arguing for and what I'm going to be explaining is what an actually, uh, I think, a nuanced kind of sector by sector approach might look like to trying to regulate AI. And of course, when we say the word AI, it can be used to mean a variety of different types of technologies. And so I'm gonna be diving into the specifics of what that actually might look like in practice to have some workable solutions rather than some very broad sweeping kind of alarmist calls um, to take on this technology that, that, that law I think is really struggling with all over the world. You stated in a New York Times op-ed that a broad brush to regulate AI is actually premature. Explain why. Yeah, so I would say both premature and ill-advised. Um, and so one of the points that I'll be making, and to me this actually seems quite intuitive, um, and it might just be because, you know, um, uh, uh, sitting here as a legal engineer, I'm thinking about, uh, I and, and at Amuta, we're thinking about all of these requirements from an actual building engineering perspective. What do these requirements translate to as code, which is you know, the ultimate goal of regulating technology is that legal requirements get embedded in that technology and help define um, how it can actually be used. And so um, uh, one of the points I'll be making, and again, I think it's quite intuitive, is that the types of laws we want to see enacted on, let's say, AI in medicine should be very different from the types of laws that are used or, or, or that are applied to the way that AI does things like filter spam, which is a very common application for machine learning, or does things like make news article recommendations on news feeds. And so the purposes and the worries and the concerns and really the ultimate goals of, uh, of each of those tasks are gonna differ. And so one of my fundamental points is that we need to take all of these specific use cases into account so that the laws we construct are actually as effective as we need them to be. Because the last thing we want are ineffective laws that make technology harder to use. So 
GDPR is getting closer and closer. Does it look like organizations are ready for GDPR by the May 2018 uh, enforcement date? So um, I would say absolutely not. Uh, I think study after study for those following the news and the headlines keep showing that organizations are really struggling with how to adapt, how to think about this new framework uh, for data. Um, uh, this GDPR mirrors some of the frameworks that have already existed in the EU, but what's really new is the fines and penalties associated with them. So I think, you know, from every level, um, from line of business up to the C-suite and organizations around the world, um, uh, GDPR is really, really driving their data strategies. Um, and, and the short answer is that no organizations are not ready. Um, uh, I think there is some hope because there's interest. I think people understand how important it is. We still have a, a few months left. Um, and um, you didn't ask, but I'll, I'll just offer some unsolicited advice for folks who are, who are grappling with these challenges. Um, is to really think about both technical challenges, uh, technical solutions, new ways of using technology to help implement rules on data, which is obviously what we're focused on here, but also new ways and new creative processes to just simple human um, structures in compliance organizations and in the way that compliance functions within organizations interface with, with data science programs. So um, uh, I think it's gonna take a lot of creativity both on the procedural side and on the technical side to make sure these solutions to GDPR can actually work and then that they can scale, which is gonna be you know, the real challenge. How, is it, how long is it gonna take for, for somebody like yourself or a legal engineer or a legal data scientist to really, once they come on board and, and get you know, melted into the organization, how long does that take for them to really get up to speed? Up to speed on GDPR, up to speed on Amuda, or, on all or everything. All these issues, yeah. Um, so, I mean, the fact is, I actually, I just had, um, uh, we work with a lot of law students uh, quite closely, um, and I had one law student reach out to me actually just last evening um, and say, where is a place I can go to keep track of all these developments? Governments are, you know, uh, by the day, it seems, proposing or talking about new regulations. And the sad answer, I think, is that there really isn't one place. This is a new field. Um, this is a, a really, I don't want to say it's a new problem, but I think the scale of the problem is new. Only recently um, has, has law and data science really come into to serious conflict. Um, and so it takes a lot of time. Um, uh, oddly, Twitter seems to be one of the best resources just because it's a very easy place to find all of the different experts you know, sharing their links. Um, but the answer is it takes, it takes quite a while and it's a real challenge to stay on top of, you know, on the one hand, the technical developments, on the other hand, the legal developments um, so that we can kind of blend the two. Well, there is a lot to keep up with and we are getting closer and closer. I'm excited to hear your talk at South by Southwest. If somebody wants to follow you, Andrew, or learn more about how to become a, a legal data scientist, how can they do that? Yeah, so I would say, again, Twitter's a great place. I'm uh, at Anbert. Amuta Data at Amuta Data. We're always tweeting about the latest things we're doing as a company. Um, I, of course, am not the only person at Amuta that's uh, uh, giving interesting talks. So we're giving interesting talks all over the place. Um, so I'd encourage folks to check us out there. And then, of course, on our website, uh, we have you know all the latest and greatest at Amuta.com and our blog as well. Thanks again, Andrew. And if you want to follow me in more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or find me on Twitter. I love to tweet at, at Tanya Hall Radio, or find me on Facebook by searching for The Tanya Hall Show. Until next time.